So those of you who know me well know that I don't stand still or sit very well. So I'm going to move around a little bit. And I'm going to start out today by giving you a little quiz. Is that OK? <laughs> and knowing that I'm standing between you and your fabulous SAS lunch, I'll make things quick. So who is the future workforce of North Carolina? Who, who are these people? Are they our K-12 students? Are they our community college students? Are they our university students? Are they H-1B foreign workers? Are they transitioning veterans out of the military or all the above? Good, you're very good students because when I was in school, I was taught if you see that answer, all the above, that's probably the answer, right? All the above. So we're gonna talk a little bit more about that. And my, my job as the last speaker is to weave what you've heard this morning all into one story. So what is NC Works? NC Works is the governor's strategic initiative to better align all state agencies, our K-12 partners, our community college partners, I see them there, our university partners, and our workforce system so that we are all working together in an integrated approach to create the most competitive workforce in the nation. And that's a pretty lofty goal, but it's not impossible. So why is this important? I just finished my dissertation, and one of the things I really talked a lot about was our national skills gap. So 45% of all jobs in the next 10 years will be in middle skill occupations. And those are jobs that require more than a high school diploma, but less than a, than a college degree. Some interesting studies have been done lately. Um, Accenture's 2014 Manufacturing Skills and Training Study found that more than half of the companies in the US would like to increase their US-based production by at least 5% in the next five years. But more than 75% of manufacturers report a moderate to severe shortage of skilled workers. You heard what the governor said that he was leaving here to go over to GE to talk about how to get a, a skilled workforce for GE. And that's becoming problematic not only in North Carolina, but all over the United States. From 1990 to 2009, the average number of career technical education credits by US public high school students declined from 4.2 to 3.6%, while the average number of credits earned in other subject areas increased. That's a problem, folks. And interestingly enough, the occupational areas with declining participation were business, manufacturing, computer, uh, information sciences, engineering technologies, and repair and transportation, with business being the area of largest decline. And I might surprise you today by telling you that a recent study was done uh, that showed that there are currently 10,000 unfilled IT jobs in the state of North Carolina because they can't find people with the right skills to do the work. So if our state is going to be globally competitive, then our students have to graduate from high school or college career ready. They have to be ready to go to work. And typically, we don't teach technical trades in our high schools very much anymore. And that's problematic because our students are graduating not work ready. We also have a large population of baby boomers. Raise your hand. I know who you are, right? And, and we're thinking about retiring. We're thinking about leaving the workforce. And that's leaving us with a minimal pipeline of skilled workers uh, to work in our advanced manufacturing facilities. I don't know if you're, you know this or not, but we have a renaissance of advanced manufacturing in the United States. And it's a huge part of our economy in North Carolina. So people say, what is work-based learning? What does that really mean? So it could be an internship, a co-op, an apprenticeship, or a pre-apprenticeship. I'm going to give you a real brief definition of what those mean. So internships are usually an exchange of services where the student can work for an organization. They can be paid. They can be unpaid. Um, the great thing about work-based learning is it gives people an opportunity to experience work. And it also gives them an opportunity to find out what they might not like to do. Right? So as Joanne Honeycutt, uh, our CTE director for the state will tell you it's almost like a GPS and it gives you an opportunity to recalculate if you have an internship and you decide you don't like that kind of work, you can go and pursue other options. Co-ops, uh, students actually stop taking classes to work full time. So they typically receive college credit, they can be paid or unpaid, but usually it's part of their educational experience either in community college um, or the university system, and we're really committed to trying to get every high school student in North Carolina the opportunity to have at least one work-based learning experience while they're in high school. 
pre-apprenticeship, big, big renaissance of pre-apprenticeship and apprenticeship. I'm um, gonna tell you a little bit about some things that are going on statewide. Um, red, they, they typically feed into a registered apprenticeship program. They expand that career pathway. You hear a lot about that, coupled with some classroom or what we call related instruction. Now I had an opportunity when I was in the private sector working for Siemens to start an apprenticeship program with youth right out of high school. I also had the opportunity to start a veteran apprenticeship program with our veterans and put them into an industrial maintenance track. You heard uh, Governor McCrory talk about the fact that we have a huge shortage in the state of industrial maintenance workers. And this is a great way to really get people um, into a track and let them learn and earn at the same time. Hey, how about our veterans? We're gonna have 18,000 veterans in North Carolina that are leaving the military in the next three years. Let's get our veterans in an apprenticeship program and let them use their GI Bill, which really uh, offsets the cost of related instruction for their employers, and it's a win-win for everybody. I, I love what I do because I get to go everywhere. I, I was in Asheville last week. Today I'm going to Wilmington. We are seeing a huge uh, resurgence of youth apprenticeship in the state of North Carolina. We have active uh, public-private partnerships in Alamance County, Catawba, Charlotte, Gaston, Guilford, Montgomery, Robeson, and Wake. And I, I think this time next year, we'll have twice as many public-private partnerships getting our kids and our youth ready to go to work. So work-based learning or co-op credit through colleges, we're seeing an increased interest in pre-apprenticeship programs that lead into formal apprenticeship programs. The North Carolina for Military Employment is a new initiative that we have with the governor's office, with commerce, with some public-private partners like Cisco and MetLife. And we're really working all over the state to get our transitioning veterans certified and ready to go to work when they leave the military. And we also have sector strategies for our transitioning veterans in IT and advanced manufacturing and healthcare. And we're pushing those certifications back while they're still on active duty so that when these folks uh, leave the military, they're work ready and there's no gap between their military time and their civilian employment. So that's why all of this is important. That's why it's important that kids can read before the third grade. That's why it's important that our principals participate in site-based learning. That's why it's important that our students participate in project learning. And that's why it's important for every high school student in North Carolina to get a work-based learning experience. Thank you.